Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today we finally have our first review on a custom RX 5700 XT. AMD says 110 degrees Celsius is fine, and an upcoming Intel NUC that shows the company will soon be moving to 10 nanometers plus. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first Drop made item. So head to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, reviews are in on the first custom RX 5700 XT. It's the Sapphire Plus overclocked version, and it looks pretty good, but obviously that's subjective. I'm personally not a huge fan of the GPU picking the color for me, but if you're not an RGB, that's the only way you'll ever get one that's painted something other than black or gray, so I get it. As for price, it's just $10 over reference at $409, so far better than some of the other cards we've seen leaked, given those leaks are accurate. Of course, the most important thing here is performance, and overall the Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT does about what you would expect. It's more powerful than AMD's reference version, though not by much. We're mostly talking only a couple FPS here and there, but the big thing it does, and does well, is much lower temps. We're talking from 16 to over 20 degrees Celsius below reference, and at the same noise level. Another thing to point out is just how often it gets really close to the 2070 Super sometimes, and yet it's around the same price as Nvidia's 2060 Super. Now, one notable issue is power draw. Even though Navi is on TSMC's new 7 nanometer process, which clearly helped third gen Ryzen's power consumption. Not that it was at all high to begin with, it just doesn't seem to do enough for AMD's Radeon division to beat Nvidia in power consumption. Basically, at the end of the day, it honestly boils down to what you want. Do you want ray tracing? Are you willing to lose FPS for it at the same price? If so, Nvidia's RTX cards are your best bet. If you don't care about ray tracing and just want more power and are okay with more power draw, the custom RX 5700 XT is what you want, though you may want to wait for other board partners to release their offerings. Really, I just think it's nice to see both manufacturers able to offer something different at a similar price point. While sticking to Navi, there's been a bit of concern for reference RX 5700 XT's temperatures, and for today's next story, AMD has addressed it in a blog post. According to the company, the temps that we've been seeing, specifically hotspot temperatures getting as high as 110 degrees Celsius under pretty heavy load, is apparently fine. AMD went into some details about its thermal management, and I'll actually say it's pretty interesting. Starting with the Radeon 7 and further refined with Navi, AMD utilizes far more state so your GPU is able to very slightly raise or lower clocks and voltages as needed. When it comes to the actual discussion on those temperatures, AMD now uses quote, an extensive network of thermal sensors distributed across the entire GPU die to intelligently monitor and tune performance in response to granular GPU activity in real time. Basically, the GPU is able to see different temperatures throughout the die, so the software can more fine-tune clocks and voltages. Because of this, AMD's hotspot isn't actually one spot, but differs depending on the part of the die that's actually hottest. So instead of a more generalized temperature, it really shows you the hottest spot. And it's here that AMD specifically says operating at a junction or hotspot temperature up to 110 degrees Celsius while gaming is expected. Of course, GPUs are made to handle more heat than CPUs, but man, that's definitely getting up there. Lastly for today, aside from an alleged presentation by Intel was leaked on Chipel's forums that goes over an upcoming gaming NUC that's supposedly coming in late 2020 or 2021. According to the slide, it's codenamed Phantom Canyon, and it comes with Intel's next-gen 10 nanometer plus 28-watt Tiger Lake U SoC. This should be the follow-up to Intel's 10 nanometer Ice Lake U chips. Obviously, these are low power variants, but 10 nanometers plus should still be pretty formidable, especially since the NUC comes equipped with either a GTX 1660 or RTX 2080, depending on the version you get. So obviously the CPU isn't that bad or it would completely bottleneck the GPU. It also includes PCI Express 4.0, which may be a disappointment for those hoping Intel was skipping PCI Express 4.0 to go straight to 5.0. It also comes with two DIMM slots for up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and up to two M.2 SSD ports. Honestly, depending on the price, this could be a pretty nice portable gaming setup. We'll just have to wait and see. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Ready to pick up a custom RX 5700 XT or are you just happy you won't hurt yours with those high temps? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.